This guy cut down a telephone pole that was servicing a nuclear power plant, but was acquitted of all charges because the state of New Hampshire's constitution enshrines the individual's right to revolution. The Clamshell Alliance was founded in 1976 specifically to oppose the construction of the Seabrook Nuclear Power Plant in Seabrook, New Hampshire. They staged nonviolent protests, they peacefully occupied the construction site, uh, eventually beginning civil disobedience campaign, with one event in 1976 resulting in the arrest of 180 New Hampshire residents. In May of 1977, 2,000 protesters occupied the construction site, with over 1,100 being arrested, which was three times the amount of people that the New Hampshire penal system could hold. The governor pressured the judge to give each defendant a minimum $500 bail, so all 1,100 defendants refused to pay it, having to be housed in National Guard armories for the next two weeks. These two weeks served to absolutely solidify the Clamshell Alliance, and it came out of this ordeal more focused, more organized, and more energized than ever before. Moving forward, all protesters caught trespassing on the site were charged with violations rather than crimes. As activists were being arrested for other activities, such as staging sit-ins in government offices, the New Hampshire courts refused to rule on the question of the right to revolution. Finally, one day during a regular and loud, annoying test of the Seabrook Emergency Alert System, Guy Chichester grabbed the chainsaw and cut down one of the poles holding the emergency siren. Chichester was charged with criminal mischief, which is a Class B felony. Although it was absolutely apparent to the court that this guy had actually done this, he was acquitted on appeal with his attorney simply quoting the New Hampshire State Constitution. The doctrine of non-resistance against arbitrary power and oppression is absurd, slavish, and destructive of the good and happiness of mankind. The protests would grow and change through the 70s and into the 80s. These protests, combined with the Three Mile Island incident of 1979, convinced New Hampshire to require more stringent safety requirements at the Seabrook power plant. In the end, the cost of these protests would force the parent company into bankruptcy, and the plant was only ever able to use one of their two reactors.